let's write a function template that will take a set object, an array, and a number of elements, and copy those elements over from the array into the set. So this is going to be a function template. It'll allow us to do this for any element type. If we look at main, we see that the first example is using the element type of int. So the set object is actually going to be an unsorted set of int. The array is actually going to be an array of ints. The second example, we'll do the same thing, but with chars. So we'll have a set of chars. We'll have an array of chars, and we'll be able to copy over those char elements from the array into the set. So what we already have here in terms of the function itself is that we have the template header that's going to be the element type. There's going to be a set parameter, an array parameter, and an integer parameter that tells us the number of elements in that array. So I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and work on it, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by filling in the parameter list. The first parameter is going to be a set object, but we need to parameterize it with the actual element type. Okay, so it's going to be an unsorted set, but an unsorted set that holds elements of type T. All right, so we write that as unsorted set with T within the angle brackets. Okay, now the way that it's written right now is that we're passing by value, which means that we actually get a copy of the set object when fill from array is called. And we know that because in pass by value, that set parameter is going to be an object that lives in the activation record for this function. And that means that if we actually insert elements into this set, then we're inserting it into a completely different object than the set object that lives in main. So rather than making a copy by passing by value, what we should do is we should pass by reference instead. And what this will do is it will set up that set object to be, sorry, that set variable to be an alias for the set object that's actually in main. Now looking at the second argument to fill from array, we're passing it an array. And if we pass an array by value, what happens is that it turns into a pointer to the first element. Okay, so this is going to turn in to an int star. Of course, we don't want to hard code in the type int. We want this to work for any element type. So what we should put as our parameter instead is t star. Now, one observation is that in order to actually copy elements out of the array into the set, we're not actually going to need to modify the contents of the array. So rather than making this just a regular old pointer to t, we should make it a pointer to a const t. And that way the compiler will keep us honest and make sure that we don't inadvertently modify any of the elements. Okay, so that's the parameter list. Now we can move on to the actual implementation of this function template. And what we need to do is we need to iterate over the elements in the array and insert each of them in turn into the set. Okay, so we'll write a for loop that's going to iterate over our array indices from zero up to n, which is the number of elements in our array. And then for each element, what we'll do is we'll call the insert member function on our set with that element as the argument. And we don't actually have to do anything further. The insert member function already takes care of duplicates. If a copy of that value already exists within the set, then it's not going to do anything further. Okay, so now if we actually were to run this code, it would work both for the case of int elements, and in that case, t would get deduced as type int, and then the first parameter would be unsorted set of int, the second parameter would be const int star. In the second case, t would get deduced as char, and so the first parameter would be unsorted set char, and the second parameter would be const char star.